This is the Truth Network. Hidden treasures of the 119th Psalm. How fun. We're digging into what I call the Superman verse (laughs) today on the hidden treasures of the 119th Psalm. And this is certainly a treasure. It is uh, the fear of the Lord anointing on the letter Zadok. And uh, (laughs) I think you're going to see that as we go through this today. It's verse 142. Verse 142 in English reads, Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is truth. So really cool. And you may wonder, Robbie, what's the Superman thing? Well, I don't know if you've ever heard this, but it's absolutely beautiful that the inventors of Superman, they were uh, two Jewish boys in New York City, and they actually were creating what the Messiah would be. Um, because if you think about it, the Messiah is Superman by all ex- examples. And especially with this particular verse, because the idea of the Zadik, the righteous one, is in fact Christ. And so it's cool, cool, cool from my perspective, this verse where he talks about thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. In other words, thy Zadik is the, is the word that's used there. And it's like saying that the Messiah is also everlasting, which is you know, certainly true before anything created and after everything is created forever. And then you can't miss this, or I think it's absolutely beautiful that when they were talking about truth, justice, and the American way, well, that's what you have in this verse. Essentially, it's just backwards. (laughs) It's justice and then truth. But the idea of Zadikness or whatever is, is that idea of justice and being made just. And the neat thing is that that is sort of the ruler by which everything else is, is taken. And so it's really cool when you look at this verse in Hebrew, it's like it says Zadik, Zadik. And, and, and the idea is that when they're doubling that, they're telling you that this is a phenomenal thing that's going to happen forever. Um, and that things are going to be, be made right and they're being made right through this idea when you really look inside the word itself. So along the Superman idea, the the letter that was originally on the chest of Superman from the Jewish perspective was this letter Zadok because he is the righteous one. So the best, the closest, I guess, in English they could make to a Zadok was the S sound. So they put the S on his chest. But the idea is actually that it would be a Zadok because he is the righteous one. He's making things right and that idea of justice (laughs) of course they added the american way in there but nonetheless i still think it's pretty cool so when you look at that word zadik which means the righteous one it starts out with the letter zaddy as we talk about it's it's also the letter that starts the word tree so you get that idea of the right angle and things being made right and jesus made everything right on a tree we could spend a lot of time on that it's so beautiful the second letter is a dalit which is the idea of a servant that's on that tree. Um, that's an amazing thing that when you look at this word, it has everything to do with Christ. And the third letter is uh, kuf, which is that idea of holiness and proximity. Very, 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 in other words, as close as you can get to God um, and holy. And so you get this idea of this tree that is making the servant right in holiness and and it's just an absolutely beautiful concept double it up and think of it forever and you get this idea of this everlasting righteousness and then it's like saying that now that we have an idea of what the ruler looks like because it's perfectly straight then the good news is everything about the law is along the lines of that ruler and it's all truth which that word in Hebrew is absolutely spectacular. It starts with an aleph um, being the first letter of the alphabet. In other words, from the beginning, it's truth. And then the second letter is a mem, which we've talked about that letter a lot here, but it is also the middle of the Hebrew alphabet. So you got the beginning, the middle, and then the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet is the tav. That's why it says emet. You can hear the T sound on the end because from the beginning to the middle to the end, it's all truth. And emet is essentially God's stamp on everything. So it's really, (laughs) when they were talking about Superman, right? Truth, justice, 
you, you, you get the idea. So what does this look like in your life, right? Well, if you don't, you go on justice and truth, let me just tell you, or you don't do things right, you, you might remember, or I think it's kind of neat, um, the children's book, Madeline, and you might remember that Miss Clavel always was, you know, <laughs> something is not right. <laughs> you know, she would be laying in the middle of the night and some of the kids be up or something would go on. And she had this sense that something was not right. And I don't know if you've ever had that <laughs> in your life. But when something's not right, it is not going to endure. Because the idea of this righteousness is endurance. Like, if something's right, if it's built right, then it lasts a great deal longer, right? If it's not, uh, <laughs> the foundation is not straight. If things aren't on a right angle, they crumble. And so I, when I think of two things in my life that would be my biggest, uh, or along the lines of my most epic disasters, um, number one would be when I fell out of the tree, which that has everything to do with right. <laughs> because the reason I fell out of the tree was I was building a tree house and I was not, making everything perpendicular. In other words, the foundation wasn't at the right angles and because I was sitting on a board that was leaning too far in one way and that board broke and I fell 35 feet. And why? <laughs> because the foundation of the treehouse that I had built, it wasn't right. It wasn't, it wasn't made right. And because of that, it couldn't endure, just like the foundations of many things. And of course, I ended up with four broken ribs and a collapsed lung, and the Lord just spared me my life, um, in spite of the fact that I was sitting on my foundation there that wasn't right. <laughs> well, much worse than that, much, much, much worse than that was when I built the, the dealership in Moxville. If you, you've heard me tell this story before, but it's so applicable to this that I was scared to death we weren't going to be able to raise the money. So rather than tell all the stockholders the whole truth about how little money I had, I decided to just sell them stock without the background information of how much money I had put into the dealership, which essentially was trying to build on a foundation of deceit or a lie. <laughs> it wasn't right. And I knew it wasn't right. I had that Mrs. Clavel feeling down inside. You know, some of the people said, well, yeah, it was the right thing to do. Well, it wasn't the right thing to do. And because I, I really believe in my heart that the dealership was built on that foundation of the original deceit, eventually it did, in fact, crumble. Once again, God spared me, and, I, and, and all things work together for good because I'd much rather be in radio anyway. But the idea is I put my family through horrible things, put all the stockholders through horrible things, and all sorts of horrible stuff happened. Um, as a result of me doing something that I knew wasn't right. A and so this is a beautiful idea of the fear of the Lord, like <laughs> thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. In other words, build stuff on Jesus, that foundation, and, and it's going to last forever. <laughs> and thy word is truth. And in, in other words, that emmet, that idea of the beginning, the middle, of the end, the whole thing, everything is truth. Right? You're not slipping in a little to see, <laughs> as I often do. You know, I think about one of my favorite scenes from Snow White, um, the original doc, you know, Disney movie, was when um, Snow White asked the, the dwarves if they'd wash their hands before dinner, <laughs> and they looked at her and said, recently, right? <laughs> Rather than saying, no, we haven't. You know, they throw in that little bit of deceit, and I wonder how many times, you know, I do that with my words, and I don't build on the foundation of truth, and so I can't build something that lasts and endures, right? Because the fear of the Lord <laughs> is the beginning of wisdom, and we need to do stuff that is right and true. Thanks for listening.